I didn't even know I existed. So. Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna tell you why we opted to get the Tesla Model Y instead of the Mustang Mach-E from Ford. They're both great cars. I fell in love first sight when I first saw the prototype of the Mustang Mach-E at the 2020 International Auto Show here in San Diego. And this is what I said about it. Right behind me is the electric Mustang coming up. I thought I would never say this, but I actually like it. Scratch that. I love the upcoming all electric or Mustang. I love the car. I was genuinely impressed with the electric crossover from Ford. I had seen pictures of it online, but I found it to be way better looking in person. There has been plenty of Ford Mustangs in my life. Actually, my first car was a Ford Mustang back in 1992. My first vehicle ever was a 1983 Ford Mustang. And there's been plenty of Mustangs in the family. My brother had a, back in the 90s, had a 1996 fully restored, beautiful Ford Mustang. And then a couple of Fox bodies as well have been in our family. The last one was the more modern 2014 Ford Mustang with the EcoBoost six cylinder. Um, so wouldn't it have been so cool that my first car had been a Ford Mustang and then that my first electric vehicle would have been a Ford Mustang Mach-E. That would have been a very romantic story. Unfortunately, it didn't happen like that. So as you can see, there's plenty of love for the most iconic car from Ford. So the idea of an electric crossover bearing the Mustang lane plate seemed pretty weird at first, but that weirdness faded away really fast when I saw it in person. I appreciated the rendering that the engineers were able to achieve with it. At least that was my opinion. And despite the fact that I was pleasantly surprised by the Mach-E, the idea of buying one never crossed my mind. Tesla has been producing cars since 2008 with the Roadster, a Lotus chassis with an electric motor. It was a very small production and it wasn't until 2012 with the introduction of the Model S that it started producing and selling cars in bigger numbers. Not great numbers, but bigger numbers. And then models X, 3 and Y followed after. After over 12 years of production, Elon Musk has learned that building automobiles is not easy. Tesla cars are often associated with poor build quality. And after these 12 years, Tesla appears to finally get, be getting it right. Yet issues persist. Tesla has this type of cult following for reasons that, that as an owner uh, are hard to explain. And I'll get back to why we never consider getting the Mach-E. This blind love that some Tesla owners or fanboys that call them feel for their cars is hard to explain. I know of people that have bought used Model S's because that's all they could afford only to turn around and replace them with new Model 3 or Ys. So whatever their ownership experience was with a used Tesla, it drove them to get another Tesla, this time a new one. Every year and with every model, Tesla seems to be getting better at delivering a car that won't have its panels fly off on the freeway and loyal customers have been there every step of the way. Yet Tesla cars continue to rank very low on lists like Consumer Reports, where it recently ranked at number 16 and at the bottom of JD Powers, surpassed by infamously unreliable brands like Chrysler, Volvo, Alfa Romeo, and even Land Rover. What all this tells me is that building cars, at least reliable ones, is not easy. Toyota and Lexus are usually ranking at the very top of any list when it comes to reliability and build quality. And this is, in my opinion, based on the fact that they give priority to proven technology over innovation. So it is no surprise that at a new car from a new brand with new technology is having such growing pains, even after over a decade of making automobiles. Now let's get back to Ford. According to JD Power's list, Ford ranked below industry average at number 22 in their vehicle dependability study that evaluates vehicles as problems per 100 vehicles. But wait, hasn't Ford been building cars for over a century? How can it be? How can they rank so low? It's understandable that Tesla has depend dependability issues as it is an incipient company that started from the ground up mass producing electric cars. But Ford? So a company that has been making cars that rank below industry average wants to have a crack uh, the red hot market of electric vehicles? Can it build a reliable electric car? My answer is, I'm not sure. Savage Keys, one of my favorite automotive channels had this to say about the Mach-E and I quote, 
Ford traditionally has not been a software company. They make cars and they're moving into a marketplace that Tesla has been in for a very long time. So they're going to have to play catch up. They don't have the cycles of learning of that company. They now have been working on a giant touchscreen UI that controls everything for the same amount of time. So this definitely feels more of a beta product. However, with things like over the air updates, your experience may vary, meaning my experience may be radically different from yours in a couple of months, end quote. Am I surprised? No, not at all. Things like this happen all of the time with first year production models. I don't mind growing pains. I'm, I'm in favor of innovation and the newest and coolest and have bought at least four cars in their first production years, knowing that I could deal with glitches and for the most part, have been good experiences, but they were not free of unexpected visits to the dealership for repairs, recalls, and all that stuff. I knew that the Mustang Mach-E could be plagued with these sorts of issues. After all, Ford isn't known for their advanced interfaces and they have never produced an electric vehicle. Have you ever heard of that cool infotainment system in a Ford vehicle? Me neither. The Mach-E platform is shared with vehicles like the Ford Escape but it's heavily modified to accommodate for its electrification. This is uncharted territory for Ford. Then come other issues like dealership experience and all that. I don't like visiting dealerships and buying the Tesla at a Tesla store was way better of an experience where the price you see is the price you pay. The last time I saw this pricing strategy was with Saturn, which is a company that went out of business. It was a GM company in the early 2000s. I repel price haggling. My experience with the Tesla store was more like uh, buying a, an iPhone than buying a car. And that is a good thing. I only dealt with one sales advisor. I scheduled a test drive over text message and was in the store just to provide my information, my driver's license, and off we were to test drive the Model Y performance. After that, everything was handled through text message with Robert, our sales advisor. And then there was the car at our doorstep. How cool is that? The Mustang mach -E would have required me to go through a traditional Ford dealership where you must deal with negotiation and where they try to stick you with packages, dealer options, extended warranties, gap insurance, and all that stuff that happens in the finance room. In fact, according to JD Powers, customers spend an average of 3.6 hours at the dealership to complete a purchase. No thank you. Our visit at the Tesla store lasted about 20 minutes and the rest of the time was just the test drive, which was a brief introduction to the basic features of the car by Robert, who answered all of our questions, and that was it. In fact, the Mustang Mach-E was never a choice. If anything, we consider getting the new Toyota Mirai, which I also saw at the 2020 San Diego Auto Show, but the hydrogen technology just pushed me away. Its strongest selling point is that it's made by Toyota, so it should be reliable, right? Well put together, and it's real-world drive. It's an architecture straight out of the Lexus LS, so the proportions of the car are very attractive. The car is beautiful, but it's very slow. Um, and unfortunately, it's nearly impossible to drive it out of California. So I wouldn't feel normal just driving it for three, four years. So no, thank you. As of today, nothing comes close to the Tesla supercharger network. And that was a huge selling point for us. We live within walking distance from one and we found that the network of superchargers is very convenient when making weekend getaway trips. Something to consider, and they may be a great selling point for both the Toyota Mirai and the Mach-E, is that they both still qualify for the federal tax credit. The Mirai even offers you $15,000 worth of hydrogen charges. How cool is that? That's, that's like an amazing deal. Competition is good, and now seems like most car manufacturers are coming out with real contenders to the different Tesla models. And that only means that electric cars are here to stay and that they'll continue to improve in order to gain our business. I have zero brand loyalty. I think that brand loyalty is a natural detrimental to the improvement of automobiles. I have owned vehicles from many makes and have yet to find the perfect car. My best ownership experience though have been with Toyota and Lexus products, but even then their cars have, been, have required me to take them to a dealership due to malfunction and recalls. I'm not here to tell you that the Model Y is the better choice. If you have a Mach-E and you're happy with it, great. I'm also not here to tell you that the Model Y is the best thing ever and that everybody should drive one. How boring will that be? 
I hope you have noticed that I haven't even touched the topic about vehicle design. Um, that's even more subjective. I have said that probably my least favorite part of the Tesla Model Y is the looks and getting the performance helped a bit in making the looks a little bit more aggressive, but I still don't think that this car will be in the top 1,000, 10,000 of the most beautiful cars in automobile history. I think that the Mach-E is better looking actually, minus the menu of wheels and tires available as I find them to be too narrow. They're pushed out for a wide stance, but when I see the car from the front or the rear, all I see is an anemic look of skinny wheels and tires. Mazda does the same thing and I totally dislike it. Every car company writes their own checks when it comes to the signs and Ford decided for these wheel packages and I'm guessing they did it in order to achieve better energy efficiency. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please hit that like button and if you haven't done so, consider subscribing. Also, I would like to remind you that the best way to support my channel is by making a comment or asking a question related to the content. And if you're planning to get a Tesla vehicle, make sure that you go to my description box because I'm going to include a referral code that's going to give you a thousand free miles at Tesla supercharging stations. It's going to help you. It's going to help me as well. See you next time.